baseball bat is one tough item. But how tough? What really happens when bat meets ball? And why does the bat sometimes break? Even the Time Warp Lab has its limitations, so we decided to pay a house call to another lab. This is the only place in the country where you certify the bats and the baseballs in the major leagues. Welcome to the University of Massachusetts Lowell Baseball Research Center. Here, Patrick Drain will show Jeff and Matt the scientific reason for broken bats. And to do so, Patrick uses this crazy machine. What we basically have here is we have a bat hanging here vertically. We're going to fire with an air cannon a ball at 160, 180 miles per hour to see what the collision looks like and go from there. We're loading the machine with a regulation wooden bat made of ash, a longtime favorite in the big leagues. That's way too fast to see. Now to whip some ash, time warp style. Okay, that's good for focus. We're all set to fire. Are you ready? I'm all set up. Okay. At 10,000 frames per second, we can see that regulation hardballs turn into squash balls when they hit the bat. And right here, you can see the ball is actually starting to wrinkle. Right, it has to go somewhere. That, to me, looks like a fake baseball. Yeah, that's, that's a real Major League Baseball. If I just saw a frozen frame of that, I would think that you really destroyed this ball. This is about a third of the ball compressing almost flat. That would take, you know, 50 or 60 of me standing on top of one of these to make right. it compress like that. Or a couple cars. Or, we hasten to add, a professional ball player. So the ball's not even as tough as we thought. But that just makes the sight of a splintered bat all the more mysterious. What gives? Clearly the ball, but what else? So in this shot, we see the full bat. And the bat bends too? This makes me feel like every single piece of equipment in baseball is made out of rubber. It's totally unexpected, because we look at a bat like this, and it feels totally solid. Yeah, when you have a long object like a bat, it is going to have the ability to bend. We're seeing some vibrations that extend all the way into the hands. So every time I hit a ball, I feel this sting going through my arms. And I think it's hard for people to understand what that sting is, but it's really these vibrations that are going back and forth really, really fast. What happens if these vibrations get too much for the bat to bear? Now we're moving an inch and a half, two inches further out. We're going to fire it at about 150 miles per hour, but that's actually replicating a 90 mile per hour pitch and a 60 mile per hour swing. Now we're going to move away from the proverbial sweet spot that lies about five to seven inches from the end of the bat. Load the next one in. There you go. When the ball hits outside the sweet spot, the bat vibrates even more. You only changed where we impacted by, what, three or four inches? And the bat is almost in an S shape at certain points. And that's an amazing amount of vibration. And what if we move it just a bit further? Can we create that bat-breaking surprise? OK, it's firing. Oh, it's broke. broke. Say it ain't so, Jeff. You can really see when the bat starts to break, all of the energy of the ball has gone into breaking this bat. It's much more common that the bat splinters a little bit than if it's actually split apart. Well, we all know by now that here at Time Warp, the uncommon is commonplace. Well, OK, we got lucky. Just as the ball is making full contact, we're seeing the bat is starting to break. It's not that the ball is harder than the bat, far from it. But when a batter misses the sweet spot, the force of the ball makes the bat vibrate and bend so violently that it splits at the weakest point, often along the grain. Snap, crackle, pop. 